Okay, we're back, we're live. One of my favorite guys in the world ever, Yukio Ozaki. He's a potter, a uh, ceramicist, a, a sculptor, works with his hands, creates beautiful things, and he has retained, you know, this sort of integrity of an artist all these years. 45 years he's been in this country as an artist. This is wonderful. Welcome to the show. Yukio. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I have so many questions. I have so many things to yes. talk about with you. To catch up with you, but you know, why don't you tell us how you got involved in primarily ceramics, ceramics. I guess, and what what made you, you know, an artist? What made you come here, come to Hawaii, and do what you do? Basically, I, uh, originally I ran away from Japan. So many things I didn't like because I was immature, and when I came here, uh, I was uh, fairly determined that if I don't make my life here. Uh, I will end it myself. You know, some people hate to hear something like that, but that's how it started. And uh, the person who became uh, my legal sponsor, he was taking a, a hobby course at YWCA on Richard Street. They used to have a ceramic studio uh, named Toshiko Takae's studio. And uh, I stepped in just to kill my time, and that was it. It just caught me, and then I felt, uh, if I don't do this well, uh, this is my end. This, this was the last straw, and that's how it started. Interesting. Yes. The last ditch effort, the last yeah. chance. Yes, because I quit every job I have ever held. <laughs> a true artist, <laughs> a free spirit, a free soul. <laughs> I was unemployable. <laughs> okay, and then, you, and then you spent many years yes. being a potter. Yes. Tell us where and when and how and, your, and how your philosophy evolved and evolved. how your work evolved. First, it all started with ego of just making, somehow making it big and making it famous and making rich. And so, and as many would do. And uh, it was a tremendous burden, but it was a challenge. And uh, if you are on that level, you do uh, make small marks here and there. And uh, to some people, it might have a big mark, but for my big-headed ego, it was so small that <laughs> I was so frustrated. I was horrendous uh, uh, alcoholic drinker. I didn't know. But uh, gradually, it came to the point that if I stuck with it, uh, I would be uh, doing myself away. And so I thought, well, I better uh, put that away on the side and then see what is it like to try to become an ordinary person, which was not the category of life I, um, I admitted to myself. And uh, the minute I did, I think in Christian term uh, that I learned from Shamanat, uh, it was uh, putting my ego away that I could see many things so much better. And I think God was ready to uh, really uh, show me how to help myself. Yeah. And uh, I uh, decided to date and uh, stay with my wife today. And it just led to family. And I knew it was going to be so. I thought, well, it's not fair to uh, just bring in small lump sum as an artist. And so as I wished, uh, when I looked at newspaper, there's nothing I could do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any talent of any kind uh, that business worthy. But uh, uh, there was a St. Louis Shamanad Education Center. And I applied, and then for many months, I didn't hear. But the person, uh, Mr. Takeda, at the time, uh, uh, working with Linda Ryan, who was a theater person, many people know, uh, they were looking for uh, ceramics in Skarna. And that's how. I landed my first and uh, last job yeah, on this island. Your base of operations. Yes. Yeah. And That's I'd, a long time ago already. It's long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already uh, 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. And yet, uh, it changed my life. Um, I told them that I wouldn't last half a year from my past. So please have somebody ready. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> now, you don't say that to, to employment too often. <laughs> But uh, uh, in a month or two, I knew this wasn't a job. And that's it happened. And then so 
my whole focus uh, very naturally values shifted from ego and art of my own to how can I be service to students? Yeah. Mahayana. Is that called? Oh, yeah, yeah. Buddhism. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I ought to learn that more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the way. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but it really, in many ways, took my burden off uh, demands I made on my own. And it was try to make sure that I am of use for other people. Mm. Uh, I didn't think it that way, but it uh, became that way. And uh, very luckily, ceramics, early on, as I particularly started firing, uh, uh, taught me to accept God, accept accidents, accept many things that I cannot actually touch, and then seeing the result from the kiln, and then looking into the peephole, uh, tremendous heat. All looking of those. into the peephole. Yes. Yeah. And it was uh, one of the connections that I uh, bound with uh, some power that I cannot reach, and yet always uh, pulling me to uh, what I need to do. And so when I came to Shamanad, even though I'm not a Catholic or Christian, uh, I, um, I feel so comfortable, so natural. And in fact, some brother uh, introduced me as Brother Yukio once, and somebody said, oh, you got up, uh, promoted. <laughs> I don't know if it's a promotion brother or not. Brother Bernie, Brother Yukio. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it was uh, amazing connection of things that uh, I think when you pray so much and you wish and then willing to take action toward that, it happens. And uh, I'm so happy it happened. Well, you told me before the show, and I, this is all terribly relevant. Yes. Is at some point, was it 10 years ago, you went back to Japan. You hadn't yes. been there in a while. And you, you found a new connection with Japan. Yes. This is very interesting. Let's take a short break, though, Yukio. Mm. Okay, and then we'll come back. Okay. And we'll hear about Yukio's reconnection with Japan. Very interesting. His, uh, his experience at Chaminade affected that, but then uh, it all affected his work. We'll be right back. Aloha, this is Alice Lee Hagen from ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My show is a bi-weekly show on Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. We invite interesting people, entrepreneurs, fascinating leaders who contribute to the social economic well-being of our state. Please tune in to my show, Business Education Spotlight, ThinkTech Hawaii, bi-weekly, Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. Aloha. Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward uh, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia. And by Asia, we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world. Uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. OK, That's we're back. Thing. We're live. We're here with Yukio Ozaki, who is a world-famous potter, ceramicist, <laughs> sculptor, right here in Hawaii. Very modest, humble guy, but we know better. OK? and. Um, He's, uh, he's with Chaminade University for a long time now. That's his base of operations. Uh, and and uh, we have a question on Twitter, but I want to hold that question until we just explore this one experience uh, that Yukio had 10 years ago. Hadn't been back to Japan for a long time. And he went back, you know, sort of through the lens of his experience here as, as a potter and uh, as a teacher in Chaminade went back to Japan. What was it like, Yukio? For 39 years, I just went back for a few quick visits, but they don't even stay at home. I was just so disrespectful of my family, <laughs> and particularly my mother. My father uh, was often away, so it was difficult anyhow. But anyway, 10 years ago, my sister, 
toward the end of the year, screamed at me on the phone. And she tell, told me she was drunk that time. She doesn't remember. <laughs> but uh, it really made me promise I'll go back to see my mother. And so the next year, I went back thinking it was for her. And it was completely for myself. And I was just a ghost with the change. And at the same time, everything I hated about Japan and then and the way of behavior and the cultural things, I loved it. It was like uh, things, all the things I rejected, God gave it back to me. And it was an incredible experience. And I fell in love with Japan, not as my home. You know, when you leave for 30 some years and don't even pay attention, uh, it's not a home anymore. And yet, it was a country where I was born and grew up, and then held that value uh, in me somewhere that reconnected. And I admire so many things about that country. Give us some examples of some of the things that you uh, found that you admire about uh, that. Uh, they keep the tradition of shrines and temples yeah. that held that uh, religious basis. And that country was so flexible. And uh, before that, there was Jomon uh, people who uh, were of their indigenous form. All of that still stays in that country. And something so profound in their way of thinking, uh, in spite of the fact uh, they are, or in general, any country, uh, contaminated with uh, uh, capitalism, and yet they hang on to their true values. Yeah. And a certain uh, code of behavior uh, held by majority. Uh, many people told me, oh, you know, that's uh, surfacial, you know, this and that. But I don't feel that way, because the sense of uh, um, courtesy, politeness, and uh, helpfulness uh, all of those, I don't see it in many other cultures. Yeah. 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 And so I admire that. And I want to uh, practice the same sense of uh, behavior here, uh, just to represent used to be Japanese a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> used to be Japanese. <laughs> I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to uh, diminish the, the uh, importance of our Twitter feed. So I want to. I want to see uh, uh, what discussion we can have around Mark Ward's Twitter tweet just now. He says, "Many today discount the power of the arts. What advice would you give to young people in pursuit of the arts, and to parents that discourage the arts? There's a choice in every kid's life." His parents can help him choose the arts, support him, or they can discourage him. What advice would you give to them at this moment? Uh, it is a great question, particularly to me, because I am almost nutty about the uh, value of art and education. And if you look back to the origin of human being, from the primates to becoming uh, human, the clearest sign was the expression in art forms. And they didn't call it art. Uh, archaeologists, anthropologists don't call it art. But it was the art connection. Fine arts connected God and uh, tried to make their lives better, prayed, and they did art uh, to connect with the spirit. Another, crafts. Uh, they made crafts to make their life better. It was the source of improving their life and their survival by connecting to art. And uh, so much of the uh, technology today and also uh, capitalism-based way of looking at uh, society uh, development, they seem to ignore art. But it is the most important connection as a human being to something beyond human. And so some people may not accept that. But I became from atheist to God believer. I don't believe in any uh, religion as my basis of operation, but as a person. But uh, I really believe in God, and that God, uh, one of the greatest gifts was the way we hold on and connect with art. 
because we express our thought beyond words, uh, beyond many things that human can uh, operate uh, in science. It is something beyond science, and it's very important to we have that connection and then uh, connect our children to that, uh, because otherwise you will end up uh, raising children only on the basis of capitalism adjusted kind of personality. And I don't believe that is the hope for the human being. Whoa, Mark, you never expected that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I tend to get too. Nice one, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> you answered his question many times over, I think. <laughs> oh, I think about it. Yeah, I think yeah, about it. Just yeah. to be in, uh, what do you call, support of what uh, many artists and of the past and now to try to hold on to the human values. Well, I, I, I'd like to know, though, where you put it, you know, in today's world. We live in a world of capitalism. Yes. We live in a world of technology, although technology can border closely on the arts uh, sometimes mm -hmm. in terms of creativity yes. and innovation. Um, but uh, those, those things are, as you said, they're not necessarily consistent. And so there has to be a sacrifice, you know, when you commit yourself to yes. the arts. How do you deal with that? It's very hard because I have to make a living. Yeah. So uh, right away, I do give in to the fact if I don't do certain things in my lifestyle, uh, I'll be obsolete. Uh, and so I do collect that, you know, I'm just worst in a computer, but I do absolute minimum so that I can keep my employment at school. Uh, other things are, uh, I wish I had uh, uh, V6, but I will go with the uh, just uh, straight four. <laughs> <laughs> and all these things that, you know, a conflict inside me about uh, giving in to uh, lifestyle that we've been spoiled with. Uh, on the other hand, what should be ideal to save uh, human society or entire planet uh, from uh, going into a wrong way is very difficult. But art, I really don't know where it belongs today in the context of how human lifestyle is developed through the uh, capitalism and through the successful uh, what we call frontline countries. Uh, but that isn't the true, I would say, truth about what uh, we should work for, because otherwise it's not going anywhere uh, in the improvement. But how, how, how does it enter into your, your creative process? I mean, I know you're teaching kids, yes. and you probably love to do that yeah. because you're garrulous and good sense of humor and affable. But, you know, now I put you in the studio. Yes. And I, and I say, go for it. You, yes. you know, make whatever pleases you. Uh, what, what is the creative process for you? This is interesting. Until about uh, 10, 12 years ago, uh, over the course of 40 some years, I was so keen on creating what I envisioned and then technically everything. Uh, as perfect as possible to make it. Over the years, I started feeling anything I wanted to or envision will be created. There are some things I admire, but I don't go into, so I don't include that. But then it hit a very uh, frustrating wall. Things weren't interesting. What I consider to be incredibly good work used to be, it wasn't good. It wasn't exciting because I already knew it was going to work. So it started happening that I uh, started uh, messing things up uh, as a purposeful accident and then tried to save it in some other way. And then that continued on to uh, some student uh, three, four years ago uh, asked me what glazes bubble uh, combinations. So I've, and then as a professional potter, uh, when, particularly when I was making it, you avoid any disturbance on the surface, nice and clean. But this uh, attitude made me avoid many things 
that I could not see. And so being able to see directs you, but not being able to see or not making effort to see will be keeping me blind always. And by going for accident, going for taboo, uh, you start to see so many things that is beyond your thoughts. And that was tremendous eye-opener and excitement. To create a disruption. Yes. And so you see, you know, there are, you, admit, you make a choice, but there are millions of other, other choices, and you are missing those. So by purposely choosing something away from what you decided, or try to see what's it like, you start to see great potentials in the way it can develop. And that's where I am now. I don't care much about what I want to make or what I uh, envision to make because it's already made. Instead, I want to see what I missed over the 40 years because wow. I followed the rules. You cannot follow rules. Oh, what because, a great place to because be. Because you just become a one of the very mundane yeah. existence. Yeah, yeah. This way you can dig deep. Yes. You can find things in yourself that you missed before. Yeah, and then accept. And accept yeah, them. Yes. My so it's really gracious. incredible. I got so much richer in the experience that way. This is part of your answer to Mark Ward, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second part. Yes. But you know, you're so introspective about this. And not everybody is introspective as yeah. you are. And I wonder, that's my question. Yes. I wonder if this being introspective like that, looking inside, yes. is a necessary element to doing art. Uh, if I didn't become this way or grow this way, I would have done myself in. I was very suicidal person, uh, in, even in Japan and since I left. And for many years, I must have troubled my sponsor. And yet, each time I find a sense of, I somehow have to see what God had in mind to, kept, to have kept me alive. And each time, uh, he shows me or she shows me answer. And that is the way I have to accept. And each time I accept, uh, burden gets lighter. And also, uh, meaning of what I have been doing uh, becomes deeper and also surprise is greater. And so I am more than happy every time when I used to stick to is broken and then something new comes up. Uh, just recently we had some incidents at school and then I had to turn off the kiln. And uh, I, I guess it turned off at maybe about 200 uh, degrees or more lower and all the things were crusty, sandy, sandpaper-like. And first I thought, oh my goodness. But then, every day since then, including some of my advanced level students, we just started loving it. It grows on you because it's something you avoided. So they start to speak, accept us, you know, look at us, see what you can see in us and they are incredible. And so uh, I think it's very important for us to purposely make effort uh, in trying to see things we have been avoiding or we have been taught this is the proper way to do uh, because it's in general. It's not about what you are. Okay, we're gonna take a short break. I, yes. I, I have to integrate all of that. And when we come back, I want to connect what you are saying about the creative process <laughs> yes. to other forms of art. Yes. Okay. And then I want to talk about our program that we're going to do together later this month. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That is... Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. <laughs> I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and of course you can check Whoa, out our okay, archives you're on really, YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii, and you kind of like, why should you do that? Because this is an art show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with uh, artists of various ilk. We talk with 
painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, uh, uh, actors, of course. And we don't on only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. It's a humbling uh, experience talking to Yukio Ozaki about his creative process and about a kind of dialogue that he has with himself. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, I think so. And we're, we're getting a look at that, and it's really a treat to hear you talk about yeah. it and to, uh, you know, to hear the way the dialogue works. I'd like to extend it, though. Yes. I'd like to extend it to a program that we're doing. So uh, on October 27th, we're doing something called Hawaii, the State of the Arts. That's a double entendre. Mm -hmm. And then the, and the tagline of it is, is um, in, uh, inspiration for everyone, which has the Mahayana yes. a kind of element to it. And, and we have um, seven speakers all together. Uh, you're one of seven, and they are from all the arts, uh, from music, from opera, from theater, from uh, digital arts. What am I missing? I'm, I know I'm missing a few things. Um, and they're they're all they're all um, very interesting people. Yes. Not maybe not a, some of them are not going to be as introspective as you because you're special. Yeah. But you know each one of them has to get along on a creative process. Yes. And each one of them also, yes. like you, has to earn a living somehow. Uh, artists are very rarely, you know, born wealthy. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so uh, I just wonder about how this extends to to the sort of the larger creative process in, in making movies, in making music, in making opera, in making dance. Uh, I know I missed one again. Um, but how, how does it, does it apply the same way, do you think? Oh, I think it's an incredible idea and then hope it works more and more toward that direction. Because just like any university system, school system, each department operates on their own and then don't want to lose their you know, the budget, and there, this, and there. And then things don't change. They don't grow. They have to think for the uh, education-wise student. But in this case, you have to think for the public who will uh, be educated and learn and benefit from development of arts all coming together. So it's so important. You want a certain reaction in the public, okay? Oh, yes. I, I'm going to tell you now, when I, when I go to see the opera, yes. invariably I cry. Oh, I, Sorry, I can't help oh, it. I, I feel it. Yes. Um, and it's been that way for a long time for I'm me. glad you do. <laughs> it's an embarrassing, you know, no, a grown same, man. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> what, you know, you talk about the audience and trying to serve the audience, trying yes. to... Uh, you know, outreach to the audience and change their, yes. improve their lives. Yes. What do you want to achieve in me as a member of your audience, as a member, as a member of the public, the, yes. you know, uh, who, who, who sees your work? What yeah. do you want? How do you want me to react, ideally? First thing I say, because I was in the theater before, uh, they don't go into it, you know, professionally, uh, but I think you cannot be fake. You can't. You can't be just putting on a show just by acting. You have to mean it, you have to live it, and you have to stick to what you believe in. And then all the different opinions have to come together to respect and accept, and then put it all together. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure some of the museum operators, organization of art you know, operators, they have to think about the uh, economy. They have to think about uh, many of the things that they are required of to operate their things, sometimes code and rules and then laws. And then those things, I'm free. You know, I don't have that. Uh, I do anything I want, except uh, decency uh, is based on I do not hurt other people, uh, including my school. And so uh, that is the only code I stick to. But everything else, I think we have to be really honest to what we believe in 
and then what we hold, each one hold as uh, each one's ideal, and it's different, but we have to come together. So I'm getting, I'm getting it, uh, tell me if I'm right. Um, so you have to be introspective, but honest and not fake in any way. Oh. You have to find honesty in the purest form. Yes. And it's, it's physical honesty, it's yes. intellectual honesty, it's, it's honesty in every way. And then somehow you have to communicate that yes. to your audience right. and make them, and this is where I get a little stuck, make them appreciate the honesty, of course, yes. but also make them kind of emulate the honesty, make them I accept, so. yes. you know, uh, bring, make it theirs, honest. make them more honest. Yes. Give them their own philosophy, yes. not necessarily yours. Yes. Yeah. Some people believe or think honesty and then showing everything you got or think is weakness because then you are you know, providing nothing to protect yourself. I think it's completely wrong. Uh, honesty is a tremendous strength because you don't have any way of uh, letting other people sneak in. Uh, and then if you are not honest, uh, they will see. Sooner or later, they will see. And it, you create tremendous weakness. And uh, sometimes being honest, you don't agree with other people's way of thinking. And yet, that's where we have to uh, have a very honest dialogue. Uh, because sometimes I am blind to their needs and then their way of operation that has to be a certain way to survive. So it's very important. So you are putting yourself in their minds. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are turning the table. Sometimes, yeah, you and have you to are looking at, looking at you from yes. their eyes yes. to have that dialogue. Yes. Yeah. And I think in many things, same way, that, like, you know, uh, from the arts that way, um, I have some dealings with gallery. Uh, but I have never been completely satisfied with any gallery. And so I only keep gallery relationship with uh, friendship. And so I decided not to keep my business uh, ego interest with gallery uh, relationship because uh, it is bound to be hurt. And so um, it's because they have their uh, mode of operation. Otherwise, they go under. In our cases, we want this much, you know. I only like to do this, you know. Uh, I like to have it displayed better. Uh, that's very tiny ego that gets in their way. And so you have to understand their needs. Otherwise, gallery can't operate. I think that's why so many galleries go under. They don't yeah, appreciate they don't, that. Yeah. yeah. So. so I want to get to the, the part about, um, about the program on the 27th. Yes. Um, what, what will you talk about? We, we talked a lot about what you would say anyway, I think. But what would, what would you tell people about how to support the arts? Yeah. Your art, but the other arts yes. also. Uh, how to make this community richer in arts. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, uh, how, how we build an in, uh, industry may not be the right word. Yes. But how we, how we build a community of people who are unfettered artists like you. Yes. You just said that it is for the purpose of making the community rich. It's not the individual artists successful and rich. Uh, I'm very happy some of them are. Uh, at the same time, if uh, only certain performing arts became very well supported, that would be great for them, but it can be a hurting experience for the rest. Uh, it has to grow together. and. I really feel I don't belong to this, uh, uh, what you have mentioned, uh, people uh, who are invited for this. Uh, it should have been somebody who are far more politically and business connected, but I'm just a plain artist. You're the one. And then I just believe in what needs to be done without thinking about individual profit. But what is the profit, not profit, the benefit for the people and for the community uh, because art uh, value tend to be downgraded 
in this community. Yeah, so too bad. much of the yeah, time. in the Hawaii community, yes. you mean? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when you go to some other areas and support level support from the community, business community, and the uh, government, it is tremendous shock for us and envy that we have, and it shouldn't be so. Particularly when we have a proud example of. Uh, Alfred Price long ago set up one person. I remember him, yeah. And that is incredible because it uh, led the country, and yet we are still hanging in this area. Yeah. Uh, some area like woodworking people in Hawaii, they are absolutely international quality. And uh, so each one can live with that pride, but we need to come together. Yeah. We need to find a solution. We need to come together. But yes. I have one last question. It's a, yes. it's a hard one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I may have to do research. <laughs> you spoke about your own experience. Yes. And how it took a while for you to come to grips with yourself about exactly what you wanted out of this and, and how you could find your artistic dialogue, yes. if you will. Um, and now we're trying to build here. I mean, I think you agree with me. We're trying to build a community of people who not only appreciate the arts, but who engage, who are involved in the arts. And you want to, you want to pass that to them early in their lives. Um, and so the question is, well, you know, what do you say to a parent that he would say, he or she would say to his child, uh, to make his child, you know, touch, yes. um, be involved with the arts. But kids don't necessarily know you didn't necessarily know. No. What do you say to a kid um, that you know to 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 bestow upon him to bless him okay. with the with this creative spirit when he doesn't know he's an innocente? What do you say? This is difficult to perform and in, in reality, but uh, it's very easy for me to say: let the child, uh, let the person, anybody, stick to their passion. Life without a passion is absolutely useless. You know, getting a job because it's good paying. You know, oh, I can go into this position because I can, you know, get power. That's just absolutely waste of life. You have to have passion in life. No matter what, some are skateboarders. You know, <laughs> some of, you know, some people. And that passion is the one that is connected to God connected to the reason of your existence. And I just, from this recent uh, incident, I have been away from ceramics for my own reason. It was all for students and this and that. And so my own ceramics were getting, in, for me, dull and dull. And suddenly tried to save the situation. I started testing glazes and everything every day for the past week. and. I saw myself getting excited because that's what was driving me to this passion-oriented way of life. And I thought, no matter how comfortable and uh, blessed my life becomes, I have to keep connection with my own passion. Otherwise, I'll become obsolete. And that's what you would tell yes. the parent to tell no the No matter child. what. Yeah. yeah, and parents too. Yeah. And so it's very difficult for parents want children to become financially successful, but financially successful doesn't mean their brain and their heart is healthy. Yeah. yeah. Becoming successful doesn't mean, uh, doesn't promise happiness. Many people think successful, I'll be happy. No, many successful people commit suicide because they can't take it. But if you are passionate, it will keep you alive. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's Yukio Uzaki, Shamanad University, a potter and a sculptor and a teacher here in Community Matters. And um, we're, we're talking about uh, the arts, we're talking about uh, uh, advancing the arts in Hawaii. And uh, we're, I guess um, when, when we have this program on October 27th, Yukio, and you and the other six are there, this will be at the Anthology Theater yeah. down the block. Yes. Um, and you can sign up for this program on thinktechhawaii.com. It's right there. Um, when we have this discussion on October 27th, Yukio is going to tell us 
how he really feels. <laughs> oh my God. I, I will be better researched and prepared for this. <laughs> thank you, Yusuf. No, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs>